adjourn the public hearing this evening on uh, Monday, November 6th to accept input, comments, uh, questions regarding the board's proposal for a minimum housing standards ordinance. We will call an ordinance. What we have found out uh, since the promulgation of this is that uh, the board itself will not be able to pass this as an ordinance and it is only uh, the legislative body of the town, which is town meeting, that happens in March. So we will accept all input and you know, either make uh, additions or changes to this as, as, as the board sees fit, and then we will uh, move this on out to the town in March for passage or not. So given that, are there any uh, comments re regarding the proposed ordinance? Yes, yes. Lorraine, please. Yeah, thank you. Lots, lots of name. Um, look, I noticed that in uh, 2017-018 under administration, it talks about housing standards board shall consist of four members, a health officer, fire chief, building inspector, and a member of the board of selectmen, which is fine, except we don't have a health officer or a building inspector that is, you know, in our town on a regular basis. I think we just appoint one or hire one. I think we get Tom Clark from Dover. So I wonder how, maybe you might want to look at that and figure out how to wangle that a little bit differently because it also says the terms of us shall correspond with their respective official tenure. So you might want to look at that a little bit. Thank, thank you, Lorraine. So in order to bring you up to speed, we in fact have in fact, Tom uh, Clark has retired from the city of Dover. He is full, not full time. He is an employee of the town of Brownsford. He is our building inspector, uh, code enforcer, and now he's also our health officer. Oh, okay. He served as our deputy health officer under Sean um, Glidden. Mm -hmm. And when Sean retired, uh, had to resign in his position, he, he agreed to serve as uh, health officer. So, so it. It, what it does mean is that we have a board of three people as opposed to four, but mm -hmm. uh, in those cases when, when the health officer is different from the building inspector, we would go back to having right. four. Well, you did, do want to look at that. The next one uh, thing I noticed is I noticed that every dwelling unit has to have at least a kitchen sink if it's a dwelling unit, and they, but it says, Two dwelling units can share a bathroom, but they can't share a kitchen. That's under 2017-111, Article 3, Minimum Standards. I'm looking at A, which talks about having a kitchen sink in working condition, and then sharing of a water closet, lab, basement, basin, base, bathtub, or shower. And it says they can share the lab in certain circumstances, but it doesn't talk about sharing a kitchen, and I would have thought that they'd be more likely to share kitchens rather than baths, but maybe you want to look at that. Yes, and we had that. hoped that our building inspector would be here tonight. He is not feeling well, and so unfortunately can't be here. So, But we'll take these and review them with Tom to see uh, what he has suggested. So let me make sure I understand this. So the minimum housing standards that we're talking about are suggesting that two dwelling units can share a bathroom, but and not you're a wondering kitchen. why. But if we don't say that they can share a kitchen, is there right. anything particular about a kitchen that makes it special? Or right. Yeah, th that's a question that I have. All right, thank you. Um, another one I'm looking at is window area. Minimum total window area measured between stops for every habit of room is 10% of the floor area. That's a pretty large figure for the. It seems to me that. Then further down, it talks about openable windows, and that has to have 40, that should be 45% of the minimum window size as required. So it looks like almost half of the window space that's required has to be openable. And I'm thinking about all the tract homes up in the archipelago that have a living room, and they have Weird. a picture window. Calvin. Yeah. Calvin Park. They all have a living room with a picture window, but there's no other windows usually in the living room. And, you know, is that, you know, what do you do about things like that? In fact, if these houses are not conforming 
do you want to have some kind of language for houses that are already built in that situation which might not be reporting? I'm just thinking that that seems like a large amount because you can't open a picture window. Yeah, so um, we'll take a look at that. We'll take a look at the application as well. I mean, we, we in particular, we're careful about, you know, the grandfathering issue because to the extent that something is unsafe or whatever, we, we don't want it to have to continue. So, uh, but I hear what you're saying about the window space, so we'll ask, we'll ask Tom to revisit that with us. And, and basically, it looks like it's only for the purpose of ventilating, so there might, you know, does he have something that, you know, what kind of ventilation does he require? Let's look into that. Yep. Because I would assume that you know, they're worried that you don't have enough air in the house, but more likely than not, I'm sure all those houses have enough air in the house or people yeah. have been dying by So the... if it's a question of ventilation, can we do something equivalent? Yeah, yeah, and, or what kind of equivalent is it, and, and is it, you know, let's look at that. I think that we should just look at that more carefully. Yeah, that's, that's thank you. That's... Um, and let's see. Also, I noticed that there are a lot of, um, under unfit dwelling, it talks about injury to health, morals, or safety. I don't think we have to worry about the morals of anybody. In does this. it say morals? It does. Under How, did we miss the, how did we miss that one? It's, and morals is in there several times, and I'm kind of okay. like, what? <laughs> yeah, I would say that too. Well, we did take out, Lorraine, is, what did it say? Something about... And you can't eat in the bedroom. You can't cook in the bedroom. Okay, so that's already been removed. I didn't. Yes. Okay, I didn't yes, look at that. That was. I like, looked at that. And says, you can't what? You can't also, eat. well, I don't know about cooking. Yeah. Cooking is still there, but it said you can't oh, yeah, eat. Yeah, and you should be able and to I eat. And I said, no one can tell me that I can't eat <laughs> in the place where but, I'm living. I mean, if I want to plug in a crock pot in my bedroom, there's nothing that's going to stop me from doing that. That, I mean, seriously, that, that's yeah, kind of overreaching. For us to like, um, no, no, the point was there are certain landlords in the, in the village, unscrupulous landlords, that will say that, that the kitchenette is part of the bedroom. And, that, and it was unsanitary. Oh, I, I, I understand that. I'm right, just, but we, but even if it's if, for that, you have to realize it would apply to, to other things. Right. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we made, we made adjustments. So okay. we may have to just look at some of those things again. Yeah, so I'm going to write down cooking, uh, also review cooking in the bedroom. Right. And I mean, obviously, you don't, want, differently. you don't want to have somebody's, you know, somebody renting out rooms and somebody's, you know, firing up a walk in the upstairs bedroom. Well, I mean, that's that, what you're worried about. Ex exactly. But you have to think about how you're going to say that, I yeah. think. Okay. Lorraine, do you have a lot more? Because I know that there, there are other folks here. I don't know whether it's more efficient to have you go through. Well, I'm just going to say that I think that was pretty much it, except for one more thing. All right. And that was um, Housing Standards Board is authorized to enter, examine, and survey at all reasonable times and in an emergency at any time. I think they should say at all reasonable times with reasonable notice. And I think that's sort of like, those are my biggest concerns. Okay. Well, thank you for, for uh, giving us such a close reading. We appreciate it. It's not as close as I should have done, but I did look through it. Okay. And sir? So, uh, Jeff Butler, uh, 308 Rollins Road. Um, yeah, I have a number of things. I mean, I read both the, the New Hampshire statute and the proposal. Um, and I find that the, the New Hampshire statute is very clear and concise as to what it applies to and only applying to um, deeming a dwelling uninhabitable. The proposed standards go, reach well beyond that in a number of places. Um, and also just um, in uh, following on with the uh, grandfather clause, some things like, uh, let's see, what number is this? 2017-111-A, it says, um, kitchen and sink must be properly connected to water and sewer system approved by the Housing Standards Board. Um, if the Housing Standards Board is just coming into being 
and my septic system was put in who knows how many years ago and is still functioning, it really shouldn't have to have been approved by the Housing Standards Board. And I just, yeah. there are some I some other that. points that that, that, that uh, okay, so is we'll made. Take, yeah, we'll take a look at that. J just for context, yeah. you know, we're, we're a small town government, so we don't start these things from scratch, obviously. Yeah. So this is essentially Dover's, mm -hmm. I believe. Okay. And, you know, Tom, it, 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 we actually started this before Tom Clark, I think, who retired from Dover, became our <coughs> uh, building inspector and code enforcement officer. But he does know it well, and so um, we can go through this with him. And I hear what, I hear what you're saying. And we, so we're trying to make this... Uh, the motivation is that when somebody comes to us with bed bugs, you know, with right. issues of, you know, this, there's a porch on this house next door to me, it looks like it's going to fall off. I mean, those are the things that we're, you know, we're trying to, to deal with, uh, you know, safety issues, and we're really not trying to tell people that they can't eat in their bedroom. Or I, I understand that, but, I mean, the fact is being, if it's in writing no, and, and I part of this... that's what I mean, that, so we'll take that, a, we'll oh, okay. take a, yeah, a, I understand. a look at that. Okay. So, but, so what else did you see like that that you... Um, you let's see, a, um, a there was another one about cooking. It says, portable cooking equipment employing flame shall be prohibited, uh, fondue pot, chafing dish... Butane burners, I mean, those kind of all apply under that. Um, I don't think those should be uh, outlawed. Um, okay. Let's see. <laughs> um, ceiling height, also. Um, my first floor ceilings are seven feet, so I don't plan on cutting my house in half and raising them four inches. What does it say? Uh, seven, seven, and seven and a third, seven foot four inches. Okay. So. All right, thank you. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, if, if there are a few little things like that. Overall, I didn't. Um, one thing I wasn't clear on is... Um, does it totally override the New Hampshire statute? Because the New Hampshire no, it statute not. has it not. so there's something about um, let's see, uh, I think about um, petitioning. So it would require petition in order for for this to like a ruling against somebody's dwelling to go forward. I mean, what type of how many complaints does it does it take? I mean, it, or can anybody at any time just go in and say, I want to look at your house and... Well, it would have to, you know, somebody, and we've had complainants come to us uh, and say, my landlord, this and that. Yeah. And so, you know, normally, you know, we, we, we call, you know, we're not, we're not trying to exercise, you know, with a heavy hammer. So, so we yeah. call, but there are cases, if we're not allowed in, where we need some mechanism for being allowed in, if we think there's an unsafe situation. So, yeah, I, 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 I go ahead. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm listening. I mean, I understand where you're coming from, but again, I just it's it's yeah. if it's not written down or is written down, then I just don't don't want to see like some kind of. I guess I'm against government having a lot of power to just enter my home at any time to right. review something and to, to me if there's there's nothing in um in the, the the rollinsford proposal that has anything about how how this um how this takes place if somebody were to to uh to have a dwelling that was dilapidated or whatever, how, how you go about determining that and... Well, there, there is a board. board that we're sending notice. Okay. That's at the beginning of the... Of yeah, that four-person board. board that Lorraine had made mention of. I guess it's in combination of other things. So the thing about the, the you know, like the sewer and... Um, water and sewer system, if somebody wanted to come in and inspect that at any time, it, it, this doesn't pre prevent that. 
necessarily. So it doesn't. So it seems too heavy handed. Yes. Kind of yeah, too I guess is what I'm too, too broad. Too broad yeah, too, yeah. Okay. Overreaching, I guess, a little, a little okay. bit. That's I'm trying to. So we'll we'll take a peek at this. Okay. We now have a little bit of time. Yep. Because it's going to come before the board voters in March. So we'll be able to take a look at this, talk about some of these things with Tom. And we may choose to uh, have another public hearing even after we make some uh, changes. Modifications. So that, you know, particularly with some of the input that we've had. And by the way, thank you for coming. I mean, it's always hel it's helpful to us yep. to get feedback. So we appreciate both of you and the reading that you've done of this, this ordinance. It's helpful. Yes. Just one more thing. I noticed that it says there, they said, well, if you decide that the house is out of compliance, for instance, this person has to put new windows in and it costs too much, they said, well, that's okay. We can decide to have it torn down. That's really pretty far. That's I thought it was we could decide to repair it and put a lien on the house. You could, or you could decide not to do that, and you could decide that it could just be torn down. I mean... It's pretty, I agree with, that it's very, very broad, and I think we should take a careful look at that before we start doing that, because it's not that it's going to be tearing down houses in Rollinsford, but all of a sudden it could happen. Well, you never, you never know who is going to serve, right? So you can't make decisions based on, oh, well, they're, they're good folks, they'll never do that. You can't ever make a decision That's that way. That's my concern. The, the regulation or the law or whatever has to stand on its own such that it protects and serves the greater good of all of us. So that's what, we're, that's what we're aiming at. You know, we know the things that we are trying to address with this, but we don't want to come down like a sledgehammer on some of the other aspects either. So I appreciate the comments. Board, did you, do you have any, anything you want to say or, or add? Okay. Thanks for you. Is there, is there anything else? Oh. All right. Any other comments? Going once, going twice, going thrice. I will call and end the public hearing at 617. And we will now be in limbo until 630. <laughs>